Knowing how to create and iterate on a sales funnel is one of the most profitable concepts an entrepreneur can master. In fact, virtually every business on the planet that has success at scale uses some type of sales funnel. Now, to become a customer, a person needs to follow a logical series of steps. They start as a consumer in your target market. They see your ad and they become a prospect. They land on your website and they become a lead. They make a purchase and they become a buyer. A sales funnel is a curated series of relationship building experiences that help turn prospects into buyers. I'm really excited that today's video will be featuring advice from one of the most successful e-commerce entrepreneurs in the industry today, Ezra Firestone. Ezra started his first e-commerce store way back in 2007 and today runs multiple businesses that generate over $20 million in revenue annually. In addition to e-commerce, Ezra founded Zipify Apps, a software as a service company focused on developing apps for Shopify. Ezra also founded Smart Marketer to empower other entrepreneurs with the knowledge they need to thrive as well as live a balanced life. We're so excited to be collaborating with Ezra. And by the end of this video, you're going to understand how to build a dangerously effective sales funnel. Hey, Ezra here, and I'm super excited to talk to you about how to build a successful sales funnel for your Shopify store. Now, the most common sales funnel is video ad or image ad direct to product offer page. So if you don't get your product offer page right, you've got no shot at converting. The product offer page is the most important page on your entire website because it's where the customer makes the buying decision. So I'm going to take you to my computer and I'm going to show you my entire strategy for every single element that I put on my e-commerce product offer pages. Let's go over to the computer and check it out. There are only three main types of product offer pages. You've got your traditional, which is sort of short form, not a lot going on, everything stuck up above the fold. And the typical use cases there are like products where it's kind of show heavy, there's a strong image focus. Maybe you've got a strong pre-sale before seeing the product page. There's just not much to say about it other than like, this is what it is, or brands that are really repeat focused, a lot of times low ticket items. Um, that tends to be the use cases for the traditional product offer pages, the kind that existed way back in 2005, where everything was above the fold before people scrolled, before mobile devices. Then you've got the long form product offer page that Apple really sort of popularized this long form, left, right content, a lot of sales copy, typical use cases here. If you've got a direct response marketer in charge who likes to write long form copy uh, or a good copywriter on the team, um, lifestyle story-based products, demoable products, education required before purchase. So, so generally high ticket items um, tend to be more of the long form. And then you've got the mini site. And the mini site is where you have multiple pages that all have call to actions to a buy box that are um, adhered together by a sticky header or a sticky footer. So you've got a sticky footer in this case where all of the pages you can see, you know, reviews, ingredients, FAQs, all the sections of what would be a product page are their own little bite-sized chunks. And each of these little bite-sized chunks has a call to action on it in the header and footer and on the site over to the buy box. And in this case, this product sold out, but that's a um, mini site. And those work really well. Generally, single item brands use product mini sites. Um, although I've been using them for some of my products for a little bit higher ticket items, like in, in my vertical, which would be like a $70 or $80 item. So which one is better? Which of these is the best? The answer is that it doesn't matter as long as the conversion assets are the same. So let's talk about the structure of your product page. So you've got your header, your carousel, your buy box, and your stacked conversion support content. So you got your header here, you got your um, carousel here, you've got your buy box here, and then you've got your stacked conversion support content, and then of course the footer of your site. The goal of the header is to provide access to any non-product content to not get in the way of the sale, to be easy to use, to support the call to action. So ideally there's a call to action in the header and to give access to the shopping cart and ideally reaffirm the brand identity. The goal of the carousel is to show off the product, to demonstrate the ownership benefit of the product, to load fast with optimized images, have at least eight looks, to build desire for the product and to showcase any videos or gifts that you might have for the product. Uh, the goal of the buy box is simply to simplify the sales pitch to upsell and cross sell. So ideally you've got an upsell and cross sell that you can leverage inside the buy box. We'll talk about that. Overcome any final objections and get that add to cart click. That's what you're doing with the buy box. And then your stacked conversion support content is designed to sell, 
to demonstrate credibility, to speak to the different types of consumers who might be interested, overcome any objections, and build desire for the product. To make all of this work, it comes down to just one set of deliverables, and that's conversion assets. I've got this theory, the conversion asset, asset concert theory. So, so I think that your product page is simply a collection of conversion assets that work in concert with one another to support you in your goal, which is a conversion, and your prospect in their goal, which is a solution to their problem. What is a conversion asset? It's just a piece of media, an image, a text, a video that supports a prospect in making a buying decision. So images, sales videos, testimonials, unique selling propositions, sales copy, etc. And I've got a list of all the must-have conversion assets that I think you need to have on your product offer page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through building out a winning desktop and mobile product offer page here in this presentation. We're going to go step by step and we'll go through all of these as the different steps. We'll talk through them and how you do them and why they make sense. And, and, and by the way, I started testing e-commerce product offer pages in 2005. So this is everything I've learned about e-commerce product offer pages in the last 16 years. You can just swipe and deploy this, copy it. And even if you only use half of it, it's going to be better than if you didn't use any. So let's build a product offer page. Step one, decide on your layout. You're going to do traditional, long form or mini site. There's a new version of mini site that I'll show you at the end, uh, which is kind of fun. Um, so answer the question. Do you have a lot to say about the product? If the answer is no, then you're going to do a traditional product offer page like Zappos with their shoes. There's just not a lot to say. So they do a very traditional product offer page, tabbed product content, focus on the image carousel, not a lot of sales copy. Um, they're going to go traditional. If there is a lot to say about your product, you're going to go long form or mini site. So once you've chosen that, the next step is optimize your header. Navigation matters. Oftentimes on my product pages, I've got nothing but a return to store link in my header. I've got a different header for my product pages than I do the rest of the pages on my site. I don't want to give you any other navigation. Shopping cart or go back to look at the other products. Of course, you can go to the footer and get to other parts of my, of my site, but your navigation matters. So let's talk about your header and some style tips. Number one, keep it slender. You don't want the header on desktop to take up more than 15 to 20% of the entire real estate. And on mobile, you don't want the, the header to take up more than 10% of the real estate. Ideally, you want to give access to the shopping cart in the header. Notice that we will have shopping cart icons on our sites um, in the header uh, because we want people to be able to tap that. I like to include my brand tagline in my header on desktop to reaffirm my brand's identity. Uh, I think that's really important. And I talk a lot about that in my social media marketing classes, but I always put my tagline also at the top of my header to remind people what I stand for. Um, and I'll always have a call to action in the header to opt in or to purchase also in the, you know, hamburger menu on mobile, I'll have that same call to action to opt in or to purchase. And I get about 30% more opt-ins than before I had this. So CTA in my header to join my email list, which is my number one thing that I want you to do. I'm always going to have my brand logo in my header as well. You'll notice they've got it here on their site because people know that when you click that brand logo, it takes you back to the homepage. So people are aware that they can tap that to get back to the homepage. So um, I always put the brand, brand logo in there as well. And I've got really simple, easy to read. Uh, text navigation in my hamburger menu, big, high, giant font. Now let's talk through some mobile specific header improvements because I had a huge increase in my conversion rate just by optimizing the header of my product page. It's the only thing I did. And of course that rolls out to my entire site. So you see, I used to have my logo, my phone number, and then a hamburger menu and a shopping cart in my header. Um, and you know, when I took this screenshot, this was actually a couple years ago when I ran this test, I was doing uh, about, you know, let's say 52% of my traffic was from mobile at that time and 24% was from tablet. And the mobile traffic was converting at 1%. My desktop traffic was converting at 4%. My tablet was around 2%. I knew I had to fix this issue of mobile only, con you know, getting me 87 cents a visitor versus $3.15 a visitor on desktop. And now my mobile traffic's even more than this. So what I did was I made my my um, header more functional by adding labeled buttons, a search option and important bookmark pages. So I started out with this. Now keep in mind, this is still breaking the rule of more, more than 10% of the screen real estate taken up from mobile, but there's some important things here. I've since gotten rid of the logo on mobile and gotten rid of the sub links on mobile, but even just doing this, I did that. So, so I went from what you see on the left over to here to what you see on the right. 
um, which the icons at the top are the most important part of that. And then I added something that said, when, when you scrolled down, I added a quick way for you to get back up to the top. So as you scrolled down, I added a button that you could tap that if you weren't interested in what was on that page, it would take you right back up to the top of the page where all the action is, right? The header. So as you scroll down, that little button appears for you. And then I also added the main bar to appear on scroll intent. So as an example, as soon as you start to scroll up, if you're on mobile and you begin to scroll up, i.e. you're no longer interested in what is on the product page, I drop the header down for you. I don't make you scroll all the way to the top. I give you access to that header. So I'll show you what that actually looks like. So, and by the way, this is what my, my navigation menu looked like. Super hard to read, pink, white text. And I made that much cleaner, much simpler, bigger text on white. Um, so I displayed the entire menu, gave the ability to hide the menu, made it big, easy to read font, gave a clear white background from cold traffic, right? I, I filtered out all warm traffic. So this is only cold traffic. who didn't know about me 20% conversion rate increase, um, and 3% average order value increase. So to have a 20% conversion rate increase from cold traffic is insane, significantly more revenue and profit with just those simple modifications to my header. So you can see this is what it looked like. Of course, I've since gotten rid of the logo and the phone number and all that. Now you can tap that little button that pops up for you. It'll take you right back to the top. If you scroll down, you start to scroll up. Boom. I dropped the menu down for you. And then of course I've got my nice, super easy to read hamburger menu that's available for you. And I, I all this stuff is available if you're on Shopify inside of my Zipify pages landing page builder. So you can use my landing page builder. And you can literally copy everything I'm doing in my header and on my product pages. Um, the other thing to think about is a sticky header. And I use sticky headers on my pre-sell pages. And I also use them on my um, mini sites. And I also use them on my long form sales pages and my social promotions and holiday sales and, you know, landing pages when I'm running sale events, sticky header is where the header actually stays with you as you scroll on desktop. Notice I've got two CTAs. This is a pre-sell article. So one to check out the products and one to join the club. These sticky headers are very effective. And we're going to talk about sticky calls to action to add a product to cart on the product page in a second. Okay. So that's your layout and your header. Now let's talk about optimizing your buy box. First thing you got to do is pick a featured testimonial. So most people do this. They have the name of their product as the first thing in their buy box. We replace that with social proof. We put social proof, a customer testimonial is the first thing in the buy box and average revenue per user increased by a dollar and 25 cents and conversion rate increased by 5% outperforming the control, the entire test. And we tested this over and over and over. And every time it wins, we open the buy box with a testimonial, some testimonial tips. You know, you want to pick one that enthusiastically endorses the product. You want to keep it really short. You want to make sure that the person who gave the testimonial is your most frequent buying demo. And then once you've picked out your testimonial, you got to pick out your pictures for your carousel, at least six, ideally eight to 10. Look at this. When you look on a mobile or a desktop product page, Look at what happens on the heat map, all of the activities in the carousel, all of it. And that's because 90% of the information transmitted to your brain is visual. 93% of consumers consider images essential in making product decisions. Your images represent your products, perceived value and quality. And there's only two types of images. There's pure product on a color. And then there's your product in context used in its intended environment lifestyle. You need both. You need both of them in context and lifestyle and a pure product on white in a variety of angles. Some tips for your carousel quality matters. So you have to have really good product photography. You want to show the product in multiple forms, multiple angles. You want to show the product in use in its intended environment. You want to show what the product is made of. If you possibly can, right? These are some folks I used to buy from. They went out of business, not because they did a bad product page, uh, but because they made some bad business decisions, but they show what their products are made of. You want to make sure those images load really, really quickly. Obviously for mobile, the faster the product page loads, the better. What I do inside my Zipify pages app for you is when you upload an image, I render it into a bunch of different sizes. And then I serve up the version of the image that's relevant for the particular device, smaller images for mobile, bigger images for desktop, et cetera. So it loads lightning fast. Your next step is to create a short form 
demonstration video of the product in use to put inside your carousel. Videos help a lot. And inside your carousel, that's not where your sales video goes. It's not where your social proof video goes. Those are going to go on the product page. And your carousel is just a simple demonstration. Could be a GIF, could be a video, but just demonstrating the product in use because your product carousel is about showing off how the product works and demonstrating how to use it. And we find that better than long form sales videos and better than, um, social proof videos, demonstration videos inside the product carousel perform the best. So choose a video for your carousel. If you haven't already take advantage of Shopify's free 14 day trial, no credit card required. Shopify is everything you need to sell online and it's so intuitive. It makes building an online store easy and fun. With Shopify's built-in marketing features, you'll always be one step ahead of the competition. It's a bit like rocket fuel for your business. Level up by clicking this link. Step six is our buy box content. This is arguably the most important part of the entire product page, aside from your carousel images and your video in your carousel is the buy box content. Now, a lot of people don't have any buy box copy, none. They're just like, I got nothing to say about this product. This is what it was. You know, this is what it's called. This is where it's made. And uh, this is how much it cost. Well, we have been testing a formula for our buy box. And keep in mind, when someone gets to the product page, the whole goal is to get them to click the add the cart button, to get them over the hump to say, yes, I want to put this in my cart. That's it. It's not to actually get them to buy. The job of your shopping cart and checkout experience is to get them to buy. The job of the product page is to convince them that they want the thing, not to finish the checkout, just to get them to click that button. And the buy box is the recap of the sales pitch. And so we figured out a formula. We've tested a whole bunch of stuff. This is our best formula. We open with a testimonial. We have one sentence on the ownership benefit of the product. So what is the benefit of owning this product? And then we have a one to two sentence overview of what the product actually is. So you can see here, I get endless compliments on my skin. That's our testimonial. Um, this one moisturizer, which is by the way, our most popular one can be used over your entire body. I.e., you don't need any other moisturizers. You just need this. It's that's the sales pitch. That's the ownership benefit. Now the benefit of owning this is it works for your whole body. You don't need anything else. And then there's a one to two sentence description of what this thing actually is. Um, same thing here, you know, um, and what you got to answer in the first one, the first sort of one sentence is as a result of owning this product, you as a consumer will get, have, obtain, become, feel, be perceived as, look like, what will be the benefit of owning this thing? And then you got to answer, what is the product? Answer those two questions above the CTA in your buy box, and you will get more people clicking that CTA. Next step, pick the call to action text, right? Add to cart, you know, add to bag. Most common ones are buy now. If you're going direct to checkout, add to cart, check out now, add to bag, you know, Ultimately, it doesn't matter. Pick add to bag or add to cart if you're going to cart, buy now or check out now if you're going to check out. Step eight, we're gonna pick our order bump inside our buy box. The product page is not just to get the add to cart for the one product, it's ideally to get the add to cart for that product or that product and another product or that product version that is an upsell as we're about to go through. So what an order bump is, is a pre-purchase order bump that increases the value of the cart. So order bumps are an on-page upsell or cross-sell that's used to maximize that average order value. Here you can see with my first ever e-commerce business, I think I launched this officially in 07, um, our pre-purchase order bump was a wig cap. We had 60% of people taking this wig cap, cost us 25 to 50 cents, sold it for four bucks. So we made a bunch of extra money using a drop down, showing an image of the cross sell right above the add to cart button. You can use pricing tiers here on my boom silk on the right hand side. I am uh, defaulting to the eight ounce, which is the most expensive variant. So you know, if you choose a bigger tier, I make more money. That's a pre-purchase order bump. Here on my um, uh, my previous brand, uh, I was offering you three. So if you get three, you get a bigger discount. You get two, you get a smaller discount. You get one, you get the smallest discount. So I was using uh, tiers to increase that average order value. You can, of course, just use different sizes, right? Like Purple Mattress is doing. You can upsell to a bundle, right? You can have a clickable link that upsells to a bundle that actually goes to the different bundle product page. Or you can do Amazon style where you've got a whole section where you can add all, you know, multiple products to the cart at the same time. These folks are using that clickable link that I'm doing. Same thing. Click over to a different product page that includes the product that they're on, but you're able to get a discount. 
You can cross sell an additional item. You can upsell or cross sell to subscription. Usually better for the second order, not usually better for the first order. You can, uh, instead of when they add the product to the cart, you can drop them on a sandwich page where they can upsell and cross sell uh, to a different item at a discount. Um, this is much better for sale events. It's not really great for evergreen product pages. Um, this is the Amazon style again here where they can add, there's a second add to cart button where they can get multiple items. But, but the idea is between five and 20% of people for most brands are going to say yes to that cross sell on your product offer page. So if you don't have it, you're doing yourself a disservice. You must include a cross sell on your product offer page if you want your average order value to be as high as you possibly can be. This isn't so much related to conversion rate, which is what all the rest of this is related to, but it's related to average order value, which is very important. All right, let's get some tips for your buy box, some mobile and desktop tips. We just talked about the carousel in the buy box. Now we're going to go some high level tips for those. So keep that call to action above the fold on desktop. Make sure that your quantity selector and your variant selector um, are easy to engage with. I like image variants, right? Little buttons they can tap. Uh, quantity selector where they can click a plus up and down. Um, those are just easier to engage with. Your conversion rate will go up versus like drop downs for everything. Here you can see uh, is a uh, image variant selector and a quantity selector with an up and down arrow. So very simple to use on mobile. You want full width buttons on mobile, mo buttons that span the entire width of the device on mobile. You want unique selling propositions in image format under the add to cart button. So here on the top option, you can see I'm showing images, best price, hassle-free returns, fast shipping, satisfaction guaranteed. I'm reminding people that it's safe to shop with me. Here on my Boom website, you can see I've got 100% risk-free money back guarantee. I'm reminding people that it's safe to click that button and your add to cart rate will go up when you add these USPs under that CTA. Um, use the isolation effect on your, on your CTAs. So the isolation effect is simply where you've got a color that contrasts from the rest of the page. So the only time that color should show up is on your CTA. So the CTA really stands out. So that's the high level of how to optimize your buy box and your carousel. Step number nine, and this is where our long form stacked conversion support content comes in. We need to write the main sales copy and product description of the pro of, uh, uh, that we're going to use on our product page. And this is the copy that explains what a product is and why it's worth purchasing. And the goal is to explain the features and benefits of the product so that the person is compelled to buy and demonstrate the ownership benefit of the product. And you got to focus on your ideal buyer. You want to write this as if you're talking to someone. And these are the questions that you need to answer. Who is it for? What are the basic product details? Where would someone use this product? When would someone use this product? Why is it useful or better than other products? How does this product actually work? Are there any industry lingo or specific words that your buyers use, right? Like, you know, I sell to women who have gone through menopause. There's a specific link lingo for that. If you're selling to rock climbers, there's a specific lingo that you can use that only that group of people knows. What is the product? How do you use it? What are the benefits of it? How is it made? Are there any key ingredients or materials? Are there any science proof or, or uniqueness that you can use? You got to focus on features and benefits. So features of the product and benefits of owning the product. And the other thing I do is I tell many stories who made the product, what inspired the creation of the product, how was the product tested, what obstacles were overcome in the development of the product, any little stories that um, explain why it was created or, or demonstrate any of the value of the product. And you also want to use sensory descriptors. How did it smell? What does it sound like? How does it feel? How does it taste? Um, like you want to evoke an emotional and sensory experience. You can also use Ogilvy's 20 in influential words, right? So for, for more of hypiness, a lot of people use these, you know, uh, to hype up their products and you can include humor wherever possible. And most importantly, scannability is everything headlines and bullets because people scan and then they go back up and read. And so my formula that I use on my long form sales pages, and I'll show you a bunch of my other formulas, I'm actually going to break down some of my product pages in a moment, but but my, uh, my formula that I use in my long form sales pages is two headlines, six bullets, one story. The first headline and bullets is focused on the ownership benefit. So it's an ownership benefit statement headline and three bullets, or in this case, six sentences or three sentences of ownership benefit focus. The second headline is focused on the features of the product. So it's a second headline and three bullets or, or a few sentences 
And then there's a mini story about why they should buy it. Why should you buy this? What is the main benefit? What's it going to do for you? So um, my long form sales page sort of structure as I answer those questions in the form of two headlines, six bullets, and a mini story. And that structure works really, really well if you're gonna go the long form sales page route. Uh, next thing you gotta do is decide on your unique selling propositions and create images to support them. So you can see here, these folks have, have figured out the USP under the add the cart button. I've been preaching this and teaching this since 2013, um, because that's when we first tested this. These folks are using USPs and image format, free shipping on all orders. You know, we donate to charities. We've got a million Instagram followers. Your USPs can be unique to your brand. We're doing made in the USA here. Um, you know, purple's going one year warranty. We're doing satisfaction guaranteed. You can see here we've got our USPs in image format on our long form sales page, cruelty free. These folks have, you know, quick delivery as one of their USPs. These folks um, have buy now, pay later as one of their USPs or that will replace it for life. So, so you gotta have unique selling propositions and you gotta have them in image format and they must be on the page. You also need guarantees. I'm a big fan of the standard money back guarantee. Common guarantees are money back, satisfaction, lifetime warranty, happiness, buyback, lowest price. Um, these guys are using a, a premium quality guarantee. These guys have one uh, that they're saying, hey, it's it's built for the long haul. So basically it's a, it's a long, like it's a you know well-made guarantee. These guys have a, a guarantee that's specific to their product. It's guaranteed smooth rides. You can also make up your guarantees uh, as long as they're relevant to your product and you can guarantee that. Um, Social proof images, right? Social proof images are really, really helpful. And the thing about social proof is it doesn't have to be media outlets, right? What a social proof is, is a quote, a source, and a logo, ideally. That's the ideal structure of social proof. And the interesting thing about the source, right, is the source doesn't have to be, um, you know, the source can be your customers. The source can be industry experts. The source can be celebrities. The source can be a crowd of people. The source can be friends. The source can be certifications you might have. The source might be where you've been published, magazines, blogs, TV, but like you can get social proof without you uh, hiring a traditional PR agent. Step 13 is to implement a traditional reviews widget. Yotpo, Looks, Stamped. Um, I'm a big fan of Stamped, but there's a bunch of them if you're using Shopify. Step 14, product FAQ. And the thing about an FAQ is they get engaged with very heavily on the page. I'll show you some heat maps in a second, but what are all the uh, objections that you might get? That's what you wanna put in the FAQ. Is what questions are people asking your customer support? You put those in your FAQ. What's your refund policy? How long does it take to ship? More is more with the FAQ. You actually wanna add a lot here of anything you can think of that someone might have a question about the product. You can see Purple Mattress, they're doing this. We do this on every one of our product pages. This is a, a one of the tabs in our mini site is if, when we have mini sites, it's always an FAQ. Uh, on long form sales pages, we always have an FAQ. They work super well. They add a lot to the conversion rate. They get consumed and maybe it's only 10% of people who consume that, but those are the people who are going to buy. Then there's your, you might also like products, items that, you know, are all the way down the bottom of the page. So in case somebody else isn't, if someone's not interested in the product page, the product that they're on, you've got maybe a bundle down below or items from a bundle. You've got maybe items from the same collection. You've got upsell or cross sell items. You've got items that are frequently bought together. You've got a way to keep, um, you know, offering them stuff once they get down to the very bottom of that product page. Some people stick them uh, here in the, right under the add to cart. I don't think that's a good idea. I think stick them all the way down the bottom of the page. So once someone scrolls down, if they're not gonna click that final add to cart button at the bottom of the page, they can check out another product. Then there's your light box pop-up and exit intent. So when someone lands on your product page, some people want to incentivize with a coupon. Some people want to incentivize with free shipping. Some people want to incentivize with a free gift. Some people want to incentivize with an opt-in download. Some people on exit intent say, hey, get 10% off. Don't leave. You can get 10% off right now. And they say, yes, I want it. They enter their email address. They get that 10% coupon. That's what we're doing on exit intent. When you try to leave, we say, hey, you know, um, don't leave. We're going to offer you 10% off. We're going to incentivize you to make a purchase. And this works extremely, extremely well. And step 17, have live chat on your, your page so people can chat with you and have a greeting. So either at 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, or 60 seconds after being on the page, fly out a greeting that says, hey, you know, uh, thanks for being here. Would you like to chat with us? Um, we use that and uh, it works super well for us and we do it after 15 seconds. The tools that we use, every one of our pages that you've just seen, I'm about to show you some live examples, is built in Zipify Pages. Obviously that's a tool that I made and I made it because I needed a easy way to deploy 
long form sales pages, landing pages, mini sites, contest pages, etc. So everything that you've seen that I have is built in Zipify. We use Stamped for reviews. We use Privy for um, you know Lightbox pop-ups on the site, exit intent, etc. We use one-click upsell for post-purchase um, upsells, which I didn't show you, but we use that. And then we're also using um, Olark for live chat. The key thing to keep in mind when designing and building sales funnels for your e-commerce store is where is this customer in the buying journey? Is this a sales funnel for people who don't know about you yet? Is this a sales funnel for people who've engaged with you but haven't purchased yet? Or is this a sales funnel for people who already bought once before? Those are the three avatars. People who don't know about you, people who know about you but haven't bought, like maybe they've seen your website or they've seen a video ad or something like that, and people who have bought. And you have to design specific for where the customer is in that journey. When someone doesn't know about you, it's maybe a video ad direct to a product page, or maybe it's an image ad or email to an opt-in where they can opt in to get more information or get a freebie. When, they've, when they have seen you but they haven't bought yet, maybe it's really social proof heavy, focused on you know, the ownership benefit of the product and the value that they're gonna get and a lot of uh, testimonials and case studies. Maybe it's pre-sell articles. And then once they have bought, maybe it's a new product launch, maybe it's a social contest, maybe it's something to keep them engaged and upsell them a new item. So the idea is really be focused on where is that customer in the journey and design for that. The most common mistake that people make when they're first building out a funnel is getting way too complex. They put in, you know, uh, an ad and a pre-sell article and a sandwich page and an offer page. They just go really deep. And it's like, no, simple is better. When you're building your first sales funnel, one asset, just the product offer page, that's it. And then use traffic from some source, whether it's a video ad, an image ad, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, PR, email, SEO, whatever. Whatever your traffic source is, get that traffic to your offer page. That's your first sales funnel. Keep it simple. And in terms of the sales funnel that I would recommend starting from, I think it's obvious at this point, I recommend the single page sales funnel, which is simply the optimized traditional product page, long form sales page, or product mini site, or two-step dandy as we just went over with a visibility source pointing to that and just optimizing that. Optimizing traffic and optimizing the offer page. Those two assets. In my case, I do a video ad on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and I do that directly to my product offer page or directly to the home page of my mini site. And I optimize the video ad and my targeting to make sure that they're performing well and engaging people. And I split test and optimize my sales page. That's it. So there you have it. That's the technology stack that I use to build out my sales pages, my product offer pages. And those are all the conversion assets and elements that I use on my product offer page. I hope you can copy that and implement it in your business and now back over to Shopify. So now that you understand how to create a sales funnel, it's time to learn how to harness the power of Facebook and Instagram ads to reach potential customers. The reality is that ad creative and ad copy are the defining factor in making ads that earn customers. Luckily, we created a video on Ezra Firestone's channel that shows you everything you need to make ads that convert. Be sure to click on this link, head over to that channel and check it out so you can take your creative strategy to the next level. Now, if you're serious about starting an online business, Shopify has everything you need. Shopify makes selling online easy, fast, and scalable. You can get started with a free 14-day trial, no credit card required. Set up your store in days and bring your brand to life. See, Shopify makes building an online store easy and fun. Plus, the powerful features and free apps make marketing simple and allow you to make more sales more often. Click the link right here to get started on your business journey today. Hopefully this video has given you some serious value and you are miles closer to building a sales funnel that can take your business to the next level. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on more tips to grow your online business. Remember, we're a channel for small business owners with big plans. I've been your host, Tyler, and I'll see you next time on Learn With Shopify.